What's up GT gang? Welcome back to the channel and today is a pretty exciting day. I actually have rocker stabilizers as well as the push rods from MMX. So we have custom length push rods because I have obviously uh, a lot of work done to the heads whether it's milling the head, milling the block, um, a five angle valve job which sinks the valve farther into the head. All of this changes the length of your push rod so that's why i had to do the custom length push rod video as you saw previously i have the stanky motorsports uh, uh what are those rock rocker arm stabilizers rocker shaft stabilizers my bad collars and the stabilizers that go from shaft to shaft and just i'm going to be installing my tensioner today this is the gt 500 tensioner with the HHP machine plate to make it fit on our application. So we're going to take all of those parts, head over to my Uncle Arts, where the engine is, and go ahead and start throwing those on. Let's get it. So if you did not know, your shorter push rods will actually be for the intake and your long push rods will be for your exhaust. That uh, The reasoning is because you have your exhaust way down here which has to go farther to get to the center of the engine, which is where the lifters are at. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop those in and then go towards the shaft. This will be a demonstration of exactly what we're gonna do here. So the idea is these stabilizers, and these collars get used on the shaft, okay? As you can see over here, we have the exhaust rocker shaft assembled. Uh, this was just to make sure I had a complete understanding how to do it. Now I'm gonna show you guys exactly what to do. So I have it laid out here. You can just pull these bolts right out. I like to set things in the exact orientation that they are and they lie. So when we pull them out, we're gonna lay them down as such. So now I'm gonna flip it 180. And there's actually little tabs that hold, here I can kind of show you, you can't just pull this off. There's little tabs that hold this, uh, I guess it's almost a retaining washer. So what we'll do, I'll have this on its head. And there's just two little tabs, one on each side. And you pry them back and it falls right out. These two tabs right here. Two little tabs. So I'm gonna go through and I'll all these so now these are out we can flip it back over and this is how it's gonna sit on the engine so you can see you have these little C clips and you want to make note of exactly where they are sitting so for instance I have a C clip on the left side of this rocker arm actually it's a left side of each rocker arm is where the C clip is we want to have the collar the red collar exactly where that C clip was and if you end up taking it apart and you don't remember what side it was it's always the opposite side of the stabilizer. So, for instance, your stabilizer will be right here and your collar goes on the opposite side. And you'll have your Allen bolt facing away from the rocker arm that is pointing outward most so that it doesn't interfere with the collar. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these C-clips as well as the rocker arms and set them in the same orientation that they sit so I can't forget and put them in the wrong spot. And then now we have a bare rocker shaft. This is what it's gonna look like. This is exactly how it's laid out facing the middle of the engine. You, you can tell that these are the intake rocker shaft because on these Hemis, the eye is always labeled. What I'm gonna do is clean off the shaft, lube it up with my assembly goo. I really like this stuff. It's really tacky and it's obviously oil soluble. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and start assembling. I have this one assembled as you can see. So I'm actually, I am going to put these C rings away. I don't need them anymore. They are irrelevant. And I'm going to bring this rocker shaft over. 
big reason why I like this assembly goo is how tacky this stuff is and doesn't like to slide around really. So this is what we're looking like. This is installed, ready to go. The only difference will be obviously we'll have to tighten these collars down as well as torque the bolts once it's on. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on and get you guys on there. Okay guys, so once again, I have this side completely finished. Um, I did this side off camera just so that I could personally get a complete understanding of how this goes, how it gets installed, and the correct way to do it. Some pointers along the way. So I'm gonna flip this around, obviously after I put the valve cover on, and we'll go ahead and start that side and I'll give you guys a step-by-step. -step. Okay, so now we're about to start on the passenger side head. I have this rocker shaft assembly ready right here. I'm gonna go ahead and get started and with the power editing, we'll be done. Okay, so they're not ran in, but I just wanna show you guys where I'm at. So I have all of the, uh, the collars are actually pointed up and on the exhaust, rocker shaft I have the allen bolt facing down towards the exhaust manifolds on all of them pointing up as you can see and on the intake side I have the exact same but pointed the opposite direction so that is the way that we figured was the best uh, there is no instruction guide or anything but um, it's pretty clear cut simple to install the one thing I would like to add is you know you're not just going to set this in and start tightening the bolts, uh, especially when you are you're connecting both rocker shafts with these rocker stabilizers. So as you tighten one, you're gonna feel a lot of tension when you don't think there should be tension. So you're really gonna have to bounce around and be really careful. And one thing that I was running into was these push rods will fall right out of the rocker arms. So after I tighten one or start to snug one up, uh, I, I would go around and make sure all of my push rods are still seated correctly in the rocker arm and it actually really helps to lift it up and push the rocker arm into the push rod as I tighten them up. So that's what I think worked best for me. So I'm going to go around and still tighten these up and that's pretty much it for that install but uh, I'll catch you guys when I'm done. All right, all right, all right. So we have everything evenly tightened. This is not torqued yet. It's about 16 and a half foot pounds. And I'll go over the exact uh, torque order that we're gonna do this in. That seems to be the best way that makes sense to me. But uh, we have, you have to make sure that these are, the collars are kind of flush and square almost with the spark plug uh, holes right here. And have, four millimeter Allen key. Tighten these up, I look pretty good because if those come loose, that's definitely a bad day waiting to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up all these collars and then go over to torquing the actual rocker bolts. One thing I did want to note is that while you're tightening down the rocker shaft bolts, you will be able to wiggle these rocker arms left and right. So while you're tightening them, you wanna make sure that it's going to be seated properly um, so that you have the most contact area on the rocker arm with the valve itself. So there are a lot of things to watch for while you're tightening these. It's not something where you just tighten them and you forget about it. You wanna make sure that you're very attentive and watching push rods, the rocker arms and where they're sitting, and the collars as well, because on the last one, I wasn't paying attention to one collar and I had all the other collars sitting up correctly. And then another one was laying up against the head and I had to loosen everything after tightening it. So definitely want to learn from my mistakes. I'm going to go ahead and torque all these and come back to you. So here's our torque order. So normally you'll have two individual rocker shafts and the intake side and the exhaust side, and you'll just go from the inside work your way out but what i'm going to do is do uh, one one two two three three four four five five so it, the order doesn't really change essentially what we did was we turned two separate rocker shafts into one so you want to torque them as it was one single rocker shaft so that's kind of how it makes sense in my head so if you don't understand it just ask questions below i'm sure there's a lot of people that'll be able to help especially me so I'm gonna go ahead and do these, and it's about 16 and a half foot pounds. It's really 
195 inch pounds but um let's just put that into foot pounds makes it easy so we're gonna do one one two two three three four four five five and then we'll go ahead and throw on the valve cover for the last time All right, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. We installed the rocker stabilizers as well as the collars. Everything went pretty smooth. We learned a lot today, and I hope you guys did too. So I'm gonna wrap this up. We have the GT500 uh, tensioner installed as well as the alternator and the, uh, the new, almost like a fenced uh, ribbed uh, tensioner or idler. And that's gonna wrap it up for today, guys. I'm really hoping to bring the pro charger over soon and get some pictures at least kind of mock it up and see how it's going to look but i'd like to install my ac compressor and the rest of the sensors next time so stay tuned for that thank you so much for watching again and i'll see you in the next one peace